Still funny, Martin. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Okay. You've done that. You've done Horse Guards Parade. Is it is it like that? Yeah, we don't have such um, tashes um, anymore. <laughs> There's a bit of competition with uh, who can have the best tash because we're allowed them. Um, but um, yeah, it's, you get weirdos coming up to you and things like that. I mean, I'd love Mr. Bean to come up to me and polish my kit, but uh, you do get some some people come. Up, funny. We'll people. get into how you kind of got into the comedy thing in a second or two. But just doing that, what's the what's the weirdest thing that's ever happened to you? Uh, you get all sorts of people coming up to you. Um, I probably um, you get a lot of phone numbers in your boots. Um, not all bad then. Not all bad, but it is if if they're not that good looking. <laughs> um, you have a, you create a good boot and an, an ugly boot. Right. So if if they're good looking, they're going your left boot, and if they're bad looking, they're going your right boot. Why the left boot? That's not really the relevant point, is it? You, you, you alternate every guard, so sure. so they don't get used to it. Um, <laughs> but um, you do. You get. Um, I had a police woman who I I tried chatting up. Well, I didn't chat her up. She sort of came up to me and liked the look of me, and like she was assisting me with a problem with a tourist. And um, I, I ended up getting her number, which is good. Later to reveal, she just wrote Sarah 999. So I was a bit, <laughs> I was a bit miffed about that. But, um, but you do get all sorts. You get people coming up and trying to touch up your kit for you, like, like on, on the video. But um, like if you've got a bit of dirt on your boots, uh, an old woman, usually, she'll come up and lick a tissue and <laughs> wipe it off. It's like wiping your face, you know. Yeah. Come here, yeah. love. Old dear kind of looking after you. So now you're on stage doing an old stand-up thing. Obviously doing that, you've got to bite your tongue, you've got to bite your lip, you can't speak back if people are goading you. Now you're on stage, yeah. you're the man in charge. Oh, Free reign, yeah? Let loose. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, you've got to bite your tongue. It's annoying sometimes because I'm just so tempted. Just to, When you see a tourist coming up to you thinking they're funny, I'm just so tempted to just put them down. But um, on, the, on the stage, I, I rely on hecklers to make my show. I'm quite quick. So um, I just love it when people shouting out. Usually someone really drunk who doesn't know what day it is. Um, it's usually good fun. So how did you get into the whole stand-up thing? Where did it all start for you? Uh, before I joined the army, I worked for a theatre company and I did a lot of acting and bits of comedy and things like that. And um, we ran a regular comedy night every month. Um, and one night, I, I used to do the front of house and the, and the light and the sounding and all that sort of thing. And uh, One night the compare wasn't there. And I thought, how hard can it be? <laughs> And uh, so I went on stage and I just ranted about a few different things and had a good laugh and a giggle and the compare eventually came and offered, they said, get five minutes together and we'll see how it goes. And just went from there, really. I've been doing it on and off ever since. Do you do you call on your experiences in the army? Do you do you use that a lot as material? There's, there's a few different bits and bobs that I mention. Um, usually when I do the reveal that I'm, I'm actually a serving soldier in the British Army, it usually gets my best round of applause of the whole, of the whole <laughs> set. But... Um, yeah, there is aspects of the army. I'd say only about 15, 20% of, of my stuff is army, though. It's, it's all based on different awkward moments that I've had in my life, like uh, when a, a, a moth flew out the urinal at me in a service station. I was running around with my flyers undone and still weeing. But um, <laughs> it's <laughs> all different. Uh, it wasn't. And when the, the toilet attendant was stood there with a mop, he didn't look too happy. He just gave me the mop and walked off. <laughs> but, um, and when a businessman came out the toilet and told me, he said, uh, you might want to clean that. I've, I've left a bit of a mess. I just thought, you think I have? But um, <laughs> you, you do, I do get a, very, a few different scenarios. I mean, just walking around Edinburgh last week. I did a whole show in Edinburgh last week based on a day's events. Um, didn't even go into my material. Just things like I had some Germans next to me and they said, uh, saw me writing some notes. They said, are oh, you a performer at the festival? I said, yeah. And uh, they said, ah, oh, my name is... Hans from G from Dusseldorf or something. I says, oh, nice to meet you. He says, what do you do? I says, comedy. He says, pardon? I says, yeah, being German, I wouldn't expect you to understand, but basically I'm, <laughs> I'm a funny man. I says, yeah, you, you're funny looking. I says, brilliant, thanks. I says, you're a comedian now. And he asked me what time it is, and I swear down it was quarter to eight in the evening. I looked at my watch and said, that's oh, 1944. and walked it off. <laughs> so... So what do your mates back at the barracks think about what you do? Is that that constant kind of, you know, make me laugh, make me laugh type thing? Uh, they didn't know for a while. It tends to be more the officers that so, so say, right, give us a joke, you know, all that sort of thing. Um, I order you to make me laugh. Uh, there's not so much order, but they sort of ask me for jokes. But I don't do jokes. There's a difference. There's a, there's a comedian and there's a comic. A comic will tell jokes. A comedian will tell stories. And I, I do the latter. But um, they, they try to. But we sort of keep it quiet at work. I don't really do it too much. I'm a totally different person at work than I am on stage. So you've done Edinburgh. What's Edinburgh. what's next? 
Um, since I've come back from Edinburgh, I've done a couple of charity shows and things like that, which have gone down very well. And uh, now I'm just sort of getting emails and phone calls daily, just saying, "Ah, oh, can you come here? Can you come there?" Um, I do. A, I did quite a bit of um, help for hero stuff, which I very much liked. I did. Um, I hosted events and compared events for him, as well as going and doing sets myself. I've been a guest speaker and things like that. Um, I love doing. I'd like to do more with help for heroes, really, um, cause, just because I love the charity. Um, they used to sort of some of them, the big ones, will, will pay me a handsome sum of sum of money, which I will donate to my own regiment's um, fund, um, which is quite nice. But just yeah, just charity gigs and and local gigs. Um, we're quite busy at the moment at work, getting ready to deploy. Um, so at the moment, I'm sort of um, keeping work down to a minimum, uh, just doing it when I get weekends off. But um, certainly, I you know I I like the offers, I and mean, then if I can if I can fit it in. I'll definitely more than happily do it. Superb. And a, a very quick plug. You're on stage tonight, yes? Uh, on, I'm on stage tonight in uh, in Cambridge. So uh, okay. it should be a, f a fun middle class rowing audience. Uh, <laughs> I don't have too much material on rowing, but I'll certainly think of something on the way there. Well, you've got a short amount of time to think of some. So yeah, best of luck. Well, good luck tonight, and thank you very much for coming in, Martin. Cheers, thank you All very the best. Much. Cheers. Cheers.